My name is Ellis Woodman, I'm the director at the Architecture Foundation and welcome to the final installment of the Architecture Foundation's 2021 Book Week. Um, we've been running a series of broadcasts um, by authors of recently published books with a focus on architecture and there's also a one day um, afternoon session uh, where we had live contributions from five authors and the recordings of those uh, are also now available on the YouTube site. My huge pleasure today to be able to introduce um, Johan Selsing and Joanna Marinescu, who've been collaborating on for quite a long time, I know, because uh, Joanna and Johanna are both um, old friends, um, on um, a monograph on Johan's fantastic body of work, which has just come out with Park Books, available in all good bookshops here. Um, wonderful, um, I guess, if the, the central collaboration is between Johan and uh, Joanna, a photographer based in London. Uh, there's also a series of um, commissioned texts. And um, I think one of the, the, the most poignant ones for me is, is uh, Wilfred Wang has uh, written the first of the texts. And Wilfred, of course, having authored the monograph about Peter Selsing, Johan's uh, father, Back in 1996, so there's a kind of kind of strong connection is between these two bodies of work is one of the the, the themes that kind of comes out. Um, but I am going to hand over uh, to Christina Pesch, who has kind of recently uh, chaired a um, a launch for the book in Stockholm, and um, she's very kindly agreed to uh, join us again here today and um, pitch some questions to to both Johan and Joanna. Christina, over to you. Um, so if I should start somewhere, I, I, I should have a spontaneous reflection uh, to begin with. So what first struck me when flipping through the pages uh, of the book is the uh, uh, many different ways in which architecture is presented and represented on the pages. There are images from construction sites with construction workers uh, wearing helmets. Um, there are presentations of unrealized projects, uh, buildings, sketches, snapshots, alongside, of course, uh, also more artistic uh, photographic um, contributions. And, and, and this variety, uh, this generosity, if you like, is also mirrored in the different voices that contribute to the text part of the, uh, of the book. Um, and I, I quite like this invitation to uh, experience the making of architecture. And in a way, it's uh, several different books on architecture in, in one volume. So, uh, Yuan, could you, could you say something about this approach and, um, and, and all the different elements and voices that went into the book? And I know this has been a very uh, long standing collaboration between uh, the two of you. Yes, yes. Um, well, many things could be said, and I'll try to make it somewhat concise if possible, because the work has has evolved very much in my collaboration with Joanna Marinesco, who has taken photographs of, of my work since about nine, since more than 10, 10, 15 years. And this has been very important. And so we've been discussing, and the book started quite a while ago, but also I must mention someone who's been incredibly important, which is, uh, or who is uh, Pamela Johnston, who's the editor of the book. She finally sort of brought it together in a way that I think um, was incredibly important for, for us. But regarding the content of the book, I would say that, of course, it presents many of the works I've developed over the years, but as architecture and architecture books frequently be, are so focused on the visual. And of course, I am, as everyone else, sort of inspired and, uh, uh, how do you say, there's this interest in the visual, but I'm also very aware that it doesn't, that's just one part of the story. And, and there are so many other aspects of architecture, how it's constructed, I mean, the technical aspects of it, but also the sort of the strong other links, how it's how it came about, the 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 atmospheres that want to, you want to achieve, or the detours that you have to do to sort of 
to find your voice or to find the solution to a certain project and and also texts i've been more and more over the years inspired by by uh, poetry and the kind of the meters in poetry is one way to finding structure in poems that in poems that in a way are found in the ordering of architecture and its structure and its spaces and so on. So, so there are many, but I would say that the, the, and then the, of course, there are so many models and things that we have in the office. This was all brought together. It started with projects and then it became more. And briefly, the book contains 20 or 29 projects, I think. and. Then it starts off with a few essays, important essays by Wilfred Wang, who knows my work since decades, but also Klaus Kaldenby, who knows my work since also since the 90s. And then Joanna Marinesco has a discussion with Pamela Johnston on the work. That's how the book is started. And then comes my first major work. So it's actually the book is chronologically arranged. And uh, the first major work is Nobel Forum from 1993. It was uh, inaugurated then. And then it stretches into 2019 with the University Library in Uppsala. But in between these projects are four essays of myself of, of various, on various subjects that are in a way elaborations of lectures I've given and so on. So it, the book really combines essays by other people and uh, essays of myself, then a few um, articles by various other people on certain works. So it, it is pretty, uh, pretty varied. And I guess it's, it's not only a visual book, it also, I think there are things to read, there are things to look into, also construction drawings or detours in drawings as sort of alternatives and how something could be built. Yeah, so this is a, some comments on, on your question. But, uh, Joanna, you, you have had a very close collaboration with, with uh, Yuan uh, throughout the years, and uh, you also took most of the uh, photographs uh, in the book. Uh, listen, as you mentioned, there's an interview with you um, where you, and that I find that very interesting, where you see a parallel between the laborious um, analog method of photography and and architecture uh, could you please elaborate a little bit on that yeah so we've been collaborating with johan from uh, since about 2007 i think we met at a, at a lecture in london and um, i was very impressed with his work but somehow i felt i can like has already built a lot by the time um, but i felt somehow i can i can bring another dimension to it and um and then this follow, it was followed by a commission in winter um, uh, 2007, probably it, going to Sweden in the middle of winter to photograph was quite a tough um, experience because of, um, of the very little light. And, um, and then I, um, I worked with, uh, on, um, on this first building, which was um, the Archive and Exhibition Center in Gotland, which uh, was right in the middle of construction. And I had a couple of days to work on it. And that, that's when our collaboration really started. And um, I, um, throughout the process, I, um, I worked with, uh, mostly with uh, analog large format camera, sometimes is a medium format camera. So quite heavy equipment, quite difficult to carry, but very you know, slow and consistent. And, um, and the meditative nature of these kind of images, somehow I feel that they parallel the, the work of um, the tectonic work of Johan Selsing. So of course, at um, at the end, some some digital photography also came in, but more as an addition to it. And because I, you know, I'm, I work with images, maybe I should go through a sort of quite um, relatively short visual presentation of the book and also of my contribution or my work on on this book. So this. Uh, is how the book is structured, kind of around uh, the beginning of the two essays by Richard Wang and, um, and Klaas Kaldenby. Um, 
and then I um I wrote this um essay in um in dialogue with Pamela Johnston um called the analog world of Johann Selsen's building, starting with this moment of um of photographing um the archives and the um, exhibition center in Boston. It's kind of wintry images, quite um, quite gloomy in a way, but um, quite um, sort of quiet. And uh, and the role of um, of, the, of nature, photographing in Sweden and um, and photographing in snow, very very strangely kind of. Uh, Beautiful images that snow acts almost as a background to the architecture and it quiets everything down. But um, it also changes the architecture considerably, doesn't it? I think you described that very beautifully in the uh, in the text, how a building changes between the seasons and that you you return to them uh, repeatedly to to experience their changing faces and their different responses to to the changing uh, chins. Yes, um, I'm uh, I'm very much interested in in the atmosphere of uh, architecture, and I'm, I'm not really looking for for the blue skies, but more for the um, for the quiet sort of images where colors come through or. Um, <clears throat> Or uh, there's no acts as a background, and um, it's a sort of quiet, quiet photography, but um, <clears throat> it's quite meditative and, and strong. And um, so after after photographing um, this Visby building, we already talked about um, about a book. I mean that was what, 13, 14 years ago, um, that idea of a book was, was in our minds since then. And, um, and I, I began to look back at the older buildings, at the buildings from the beginning of uh, Johann Sersing's career, the Nobel Forum, for instance. Um, and these, are, these are not my photographs, these are early construction photographs, um, but I, I find them very strong and they also, for me, they function as reference images, but they are interesting in relation to all the other materials in the books that uh, Johan you know, was so keen to bring about. Um, um, these are from um, Bonnier's gallery that I specifically wanted um, photographed in snow to, um, to reflect uh, to reflect the white and, um, and establish a relation between the outside and, uh, and the inside images of the galleries and the quiet spaces of the gallery. And um, a bit later, um, these are uh, new photographs of um, completed buildings. This is a Visby again in summer, very different light. And uh, the Orsta Church um, and the crematoriums that are somehow the highlight, highlight I, I believe, of um, Johann Selsing's career. Um, and Johann will talk more about these. I will, um, I just um, want to say that this, which was finished in 2013, was a uh, probably the most interesting, but also the most difficult project for me to work on. Um, and uh, it was very soon after, after my son was born <laughs> and going in towards the winter with a um, tripod and heavy cameras um, to photograph the um, crematorium was um, quite an experience. So, uh, yeah, so you, you described this as, as a split in, uh, in, in your collaboration. Uh, that there is a before and an after um, created yeah. by, by the new crematorium, that up until then you had been looking back on your one's work, so to say, um, chronolog chronologically, but from mm. this moment you are in the making uh, or invited into the, the making of, of, of this architecture, is that correct? Um, yes and no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I had already... Uh, so worked on completed projects before before this, but um, but I think it, it's probably also connected with uh, the change in, in my life and kind of um, 
also traveling becoming more difficult. <laughs> um, but um, one could stress another aspect that I mean prior to the to the crematorium and the church, I had been developing well various buildings, institutions, and universities, and so on. But I've been doing several buildings for art, ex ex exhibition building, museums, and so on, and. And there I, for, in different um, competitions, I became involved in buildings for the ritual aspects of life. I mean, the, the right really a church is sort of designing a space for prayers or for rites of passage. And, and then the crematorium is, of course, the, the rites about, about um, a burial are, this was, of course, very different from the previous one. So this also changed my, I was very, I feel very fortunate to have been able to work with these very sort of difficult and uh, uh, different um, kind of works. So that, that changed for me too. And, uh, and I think the crematorium is an important building. It's not so large, but it had me thinking or re reflecting on how do you, how do you make a space that is good I mean, technically, this the crematorium is pretty much a technical facility for the municipality, but it's also a place where people um, say goodbye to their beloved, and that's a that's a very special thing. And how to make these things be efficient or sort of efficient for those working and respectful to to all parties. Could we could you dwell a little bit in this uh, in this project? Because uh, I would also like to bring up uh, one of your essays, the Plants and Meters essay, and you also you mentioned this in the in the, in the beginning of your 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 presentation. But I would like you to develop that a little bit more because you describe the the plan as a method, uh, and you make an, an analogy between the plan and how poetry. Um, is organized through its rhetorical figures and rhyme, for example. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your working process and, and also possibly your sources of yes, inspiration? I, yes, I mean, I- Departing from, from the crematorium. Yes, I, could even, I could even bring in this, a few images from the crematorium. Yeah, so, well, this is again the, uh, as um, this is the cover of the book, which was actually a snapshot that I took while we were working on this. Uh, we frequently do prototypes of, of buildings and to the left in the image is the prototype of the, the brickwork of the crematorium. But um, this building was, um, and you're speaking about the plans meters text, this text was more or less parallel with this work. And what my, if you think of a novel, which is written with a certain subject with characters, the syllables rarely in a novel, it could be a magnificent novel, but the syllables in each um, sentence doesn't, aren't so important. They are of importance, of course, but, but whereas in poetry, every syllable, every sort of the meter, the, the rhythm of the poem is so incredibly important. And uh, I would say that building or my sort of my, um, suggestion is that one can look upon buildings in general, buildings of, of structures, whatever kind, uh, is in a way similar to prose in that every individual part is not of such importance, whereas architecture can, in, in certain cases, or should, one could even say, have this, that every part has a meaning and sort of the, the proportions between all the the consisting parts is something that enables the building to present an atmosphere of a character which is of another kind than just any building. And in that way, I say it's similar to, to poetry that, you know, this, the syllables of a verse are, each one is so important. And to go into the, this crematorium where this is the actual, the canopy, which is a large entrance porch, which was not at all, required in the brief for the, this was an international competition, but I suggested this very generous um, um, canopy under which the, the um, those um, coming for the, the cremation will be, could, could walk around. Actually, it is in this precious wood, so they, the client wanted us to keep as many trees as possible, which, which I, I did in the competition, when, which we won. 
And then we saved one of the huge pines in this position where there's, but finally having won the competition, I realized that it would be, uh, it would be risky to have this pine so close to the excavations of the building. So it's somehow in the end, I, I substituted the pine tree for a, should we say a petrified tree, which is this granite load bearing column, which is of course rare nowadays, but the, a, a load bearing granite column in the way also sets the tone. This is not just, it's not just a technical facility for cremation. It's also a ritual space in some way. So it somehow challenged the, the what could be perceived as a kind of brutal or sort of austere brick building. But the, the granite is something different, I would say. But here, just a few glimpses of sketches there are for certain projects, we have included some sketch pro processes. This to the left, you see some sketches of linear buildings and even a circular building. This was my first sort of tentative steps. Frequent, soon I found that the compact was probably a more a better solution for this building. And the compact building has sort of qualities of, should we say, enigma rather than the transparency of a, of a slender, linear building and this is from the competition here you could see just where the pages join each other is this gigantic pine is opening through an opening in the canopy but here is the final building the plan to the right of the final building where i would say that in the the process of the the, the um, development in the competition i had sort of a kind of visual rhyme almost where this cremator where the, where the atrium which is here had an, a similar opening of the same measures here at the canopy but as i got to know the program better it was like the building the structure the organization of the spaces didn't need this kind of rhyme it was rather like like the rhyme could could go whereas the 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 meter of the poem or if the building would be better served with other solutions. So here then instead, it's just a, a roof. The, the canopy is, is the roof with a slit, a slit bringing down light on this wall. So these are the kind of things that are described in the book in some detail, because I felt that in such a book compared to, the, in reality, it's the real, it's only the building that counts. Whereas in a book, you could explain something of how your troubles with a work or your your, your detours where you found things you couldn't ask for and so on. So these are some images. And in a way, this is the crematorium, the cremation hall, which has a, a marble floor and some glazed bricks and it's all white concrete. So it's a very light interior whereas the austerity of the outside is, is, is very pronounced. And finally, this small cellar where there's a kind of, where you could, have a, um, you could bid your beloved goodbye by in an open coffin there. And then- Johan, can I, may I just ask you before we leave the, the crematorium because uh, you were assigned to, to uh, design something for a, for, a, for a site which is in no, by no means virgin land. You know, it's, uh, um, in incredibly charged uh, territory, uh, World Heritage Site um, containing um, icons of, of 20th century architecture like the uh, Resurrection Chapel by Sigurd Leverens and, and the Woodland uh, Chapel um, by, by Gunnar Asplund, et cetera, et cetera. And also a site and a, which also ideolo ideologically, but also architecturally developed over, over decades. Uh, what were your thoughts on that? How could you... <laughs> Uh, when when uh, when winning the competition, um... yes, I think it's a very naturally it's a very relevant question, and it could be. But to me, uh, frankly, I must say, I mean, I knew this place very well. I'm born in Stockholm, and I've showed the place to colleagues, to foreign colleagues now and then going there. So, so to me, I would say that focusing on the competition, the, the brief of the competition and how to arrange the building as, should we say, as appropriate or as efficient as possible for the, uh, for the brief, that was, I could almost say it's a kind of antidote to, to the whole uh, 
um, problem of the famous architects that developed buildings nearby. I wasn't much, I wasn't much, um, well, of course I was thinking of that, but that's, uh, it was not such a big thing. I think I, and as it is, I've been developing some other works in other areas where there's been interesting architectures around too. So, but I think the focusing on the actual commission, on the actual work, was really made me sort of um, not think about the geniuses that had worked nearby. That's, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'll let you continue with, with Orsta. I saw that. Well, just, a, just a few, another work which is described in some detail is this church at Orsta, which is really, really simultaneous with a crematorium. And here is a working model in one to 25. And we do frequently large models. We also do full scale prototypes on site as much as we can. And here are to the left and right are some sketches of the building. And in this case, I had numerous, you know, I developed this relatively boxy building and I had initially had ideas for skylights quite advanced skylights inspired by the Baroque sort of light wells of enigmatic light coming down from sources you don't know where they are and so on. So, but I finally skipped all that too because I realized this that became too elaborate for this little suburban church. So I settled for very, should we say, ordinary windows, as ordinary as they can be when they're five meters high because they're pretty, pretty large. But then I had to sort of find a solution to to the ceiling and just to the left. And here, this is a kind of explanation that one rarely does, but the book enabled me to, to sort of, someone found these sketches and I, of course I knew them. And it's, it tells how their various solutions for, the, for the, the ceiling had one, originally one beam and then two very high beams as you see to the left and then uh, some other beams, but finally I sort of capitulated as I frequently feel that you don't know how to solve the, the task. And then I, I just uh, scribbled some various um, beams in strange inclinations and found that that could be somehow reasonable. And the, the reason was that I felt that that somehow responded to how we all feel at times that we sort of we're not properly dressed for the occasion or we don't like what the priest is saying or we don't know the bride or don't like the groom or whatever it is so then somehow the the inclinations the odd inclinations of these beams somehow responded to this feeling we all have at times of being at odds with things so that was how i just sort of explained that so the inside again is more light and more nuanced maybe than the somewhat more austere exterior and then here is the only thing that remains of the more advanced skylights in the in the very thick. The, the walls are 80 centimeters thick, so it's almost medieval uh, dimensions, whereas the the intricacies of the windows are of a more delicate kind. So these are just what's in the kind the, the different things that are in the book. And here's the the, the roof. But I'll I think I'll stop there. Yeah, I would like to ask before we before, before we let these images go. I would like to ask Joanna uh, to to comment on her interpretation of of this specific project, because she also described visiting the building uh, during different ceremonies, um, and also the building's uh, relationship to the uh, to the surrounding nature, which is quite striking. I photographed uh, Orsta Church uh, throughout uh, probably about three days. Um, I took to, um, to photograph it. And um, there were, I witnessed um, a funeral, a wedding, and a singing ceremony, um, maybe a baptism as well. The interior of the church is very simple, it's very plain, it's white, it's um, but yet the movement comes from comes from people and from the, the colors around and also the light, the light moving um, throughout the building um, throughout the day. It, it uh, almost is like, um, it's a sundial, the, the big windows act as a sundial. 
in the church and it's um it's very interesting to observe and also to to capture on on film on the camera this um this movement and outside um from what i understood the, the building was meant to have uh, pine trees uh, to be surrounded by pine trees that uh, then were cut by uh, uh, by Yes. People uh, taking care of the building, so you can only imagine uh, somehow the also um, the soft softening nature in relation to a kind of stark, strong, uh, very tectonic building, kind of growing out of the rocks that is uh, that is on. And um, I also want to make a sort of wrap up, probably uh, you know, comments. That, Sort of a book like this and the work like this, it's um, it's only possible through. Um, it's it's like an act of faith. It's um, it's taken so long and it's been so difficult to make that um, um, it's so much information and um, imagery and work from everyone kind of um, input in in there that. Um, and, and yet I'm very happy that it's been carried through and um, yeah, with the um, help of, um, of Pamela Johnston, the editor, and Anders Jungmann, who had done a fantastic job as a graphic designer, and I know how difficult it's been. Um, Johan collaborators throughout the years have been incredible as well. It's, um, they've have brought so much to this. and. Um, Finally, um, the publishers, Bar Books, uh, wrapped, wrapped up so, um, the work in a very a beautiful product. I think it's, uh, yes, yes. And Johan, thank you for this um, long term collaboration. I mean, it's, um, it's very interesting for me to see, to see work brought together, work that has been done over so many years brought together in, um, in a book. So, um, no, uh, yeah, I must uh, say the same. I'm I'm really fortunate to have someone who's been so interested and so, whom I've found, um, as, should we say, some uh, has a voice which fits or has interest in this. I think that's your work. Your your work in photography has been so. Also, your other work, and the, it's a funny thing that you have. I saw quite early that you have a, what do you say, a faiblesse. You have a sweet tooth for doing buildings in snow, which is quite wonderful because there's so many architecture projects that have sort of are in such sunlight. And of course, sunlight is um, particularly this, uh, this winter season so rare in Sweden. So I think your interest in showing buildings in a less uh, glittery um, time is very interesting. And there are it's not a meant to be a theme in this book, but as it happens, there are, and even the cover is of course, is a snowy figure. And I, I, I quite like that. I, you know, I'm, I'm really curious uh, when an architect decides to publish a book, what happens then, you know? Uh, and Yuan, how do you look upon the relationship between the book work and your architectural work? Um, you know, has this processing of your work, uh, because it's also an archive of sorts. Uh, it's also a revisiting of, of, um, of previous projects. Um, you know, it's a learning process, I guess. Uh, how does this uh, aff affect your work or, or, you know, what is, um, it's 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 also a process of self reflection, I guess. So this this has this bookmaking in any way changed your um, architectural make, making or architectural endeavors? I, I don't think it has, but I mean, uh, uh, collecting and assembling and having I've been fortunate with some collaborators in the office who's brought up things from the archive or from the cellar or models or sketches and. This has been very interesting and surprising at times, and it's, and you do sometimes you get impressed. Yeah, well, did we do that? And it becomes more than you, and but also it becomes a bit much. You're sort of so you're both impressed of 
of seeing a lot of things, but you also get, it gets a bit too much. So I would, I think that, as I said, with the issue of, of designing a building next to Aspen and Leverance buildings on the, the Woodland Cemetery, I would say the same way here, that usually the focus on the actual work in the projects is again something that sort of this has been going on for a long time this the work on the book but luckily i've had i had to support my practice and i had to do these competitions that we are we recently we're just now doing an art center in finland that we won a competition usually the 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 focus in in my life and the work is I guess it's both makes you a bit cut off from other things, but also it sort of keeps you sane in things that otherwise would take too much of your attention. So if it's the, the famous neighboring architects, or if it's your work that becomes a thick book, that sort of both things can sort of can bring you um, somewhere where you shouldn't be. So I, I, I think that focusing on the 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 as the the real aspects of work is i think usually what keeps you keep you sane <laughs> if i could say so but i don't that's um, it's not a good answer but the, that's a bit of how it is i think well luckily uh the rest of us have the uh the book now to to return to and uh make up our minds about <laughs> questions like that so thank you thank you very much mm -hmm. Thank you.